I'm going to add a quick audio input to this so they can use it for something else besides crappy AM radio. I'm also going to add in the uh, missing filter capacitor. I found that, so I'm going to put that in there. And then for the audio input, all you need really is an RCA jack, a small switch, a two-way switch, by the way, and a .01 fil uh, capacitor. And now this, I'm going to mount it right here. There's a perfect hole in the back there for that to go. Maybe they had another model of radio that had a phono input, but this one doesn't have it. So that is going to go right there. And then I'm going to run, and then the, this switch here is going to switch that line right there because that'll cut out the radio because the volume control is right there. Then it goes into the audio amplifier and the audio output tube. So now I just uh, take this apart. I have uh, mounted the RCA jack and drill the hole for the small switch. The switch already had wires on it, so it's perfect. Now here's the capacitor I'm going to clip out. This capacitor, on this side we have the signal coming from the detector, and here it goes into this wire, which goes to the volume control, and then there's another wire coming back from the volume control. This one goes into the grid of the preamp tube, so I just need to clip this out of the way and solder one of the wires coming from the switch to this one and the other wire going to the phono jack and then the middle wire, the black wire is going to go to the volume control so you'll be able to switch between radio or this input here. I'm just heating up the soldering iron now and I'm also going to put this in and the extra filter capacitor because there's only one in here and there was I was noticing some hums so that that's easily fixed with another one of these and there it is done. This 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 literally took less than 10 minutes. Um, here is the wire coming in from the phono input to the switch. And here is the wire coming in from the radio detector through this capacitor to the switch. I'm leaving this capacitor in because it's it's fine. It has like zero volts across it. This this thing will last forever. Uh, and then the black wire is the return wire coming from the switch going into the audio amplifier so this will let you switch between either this red wire or that red wire radio or phono through this little switch now I just need to test it out oh and I, I'm also gonna put this in I am just need to this this capacitor is gonna go from that point right there to chassis ground and the ground on this capacitor goes to this resistor and this is these resistors here to float up a negative voltage to bias the audio output tube grid negative. So that's what these resistors are for. They go between uh, chassis ground here and this wire, which is the transformer ground. All right, my <clears throat> my mod worked. I listened to it for about an hour, and then I decided to take the dial glass off and clean it. I didn't clean the back side because some of these actually use water soluble ink. So if you try and clean it off with something wet, you'll just take all the numbers off. So this is as good as it's going to get. There's still some crust up there. It looks like it was glued on the top or something because there's lots of stains that really won't come off. I think it has got glue on it. But anyway, I also cleaned this thing. And I also took the dial glass off because I was going to try and get to the little lamp down there because I got to get that out because when you turn when you tune the radio, you see it moves. It also moves the wires, which are turning to dust. And I need to replace them because sometimes I'll be tuning this and the wires will just short out and the radio will <laughs> kind of turn off for a sec and I'll have to tune this again and try to get it to unshort so these wires need to go I'm guessing the short happens right up there near the socket because yeah there's bare wires near the socket and the socket is loose I don't know how to get this stupid thing out I think I figured it out you push this down through there the paper was loose and that goes into the screw right there 
Oh, yeah, there we go. That'll loosen that up. And then, I don't know what will happen. There you have it. Once you loosen the little screw, you can pull this bulb right out of there. See that? That's in a little socket. And I just need to solder fresh wires, replace all this black wire here. And that leads all the way down, all the way down there, where you can see someone has spliced it before, before me, someone spliced it. So, I guess the wires failed before, because every time you tune the radio, this wire is going to be doing this, you know, and just with age, this will happen. So, <laughs> yeah. I was going to just replace the wires on the top. But then I discovered that the wires that go up to that where I was going to splice onto are also crumbling. And that that's not good because those wires go through that hole right there and they're, they're really crumbly. So that could short out too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my red wires straight down through this hole on the surface. And right to this tie point right here which is the, the two 6 volt. Wind the six volt winding, and then that's this is that's easier to wire up than have to root it this way around the transformer and up. I'm just gonna put it through this big hole in the chassis, and here it is replaced. Looks pretty good. I tr I tried to twist the wires. Um, they're just long enough. Had just the longest wire to get down there. It's perfect. As you can see, um, I'm gonna. I'm going to test it out now because <clears throat> this little thing here is supposed to project a line onto the dial. It wasn't working because I think the bulb was too far back in the little sleeve here. So I tried to adjust it and I also cleaned that little glass thing. So I'm going to power this up and see if uh, we can see the, the line like it's supposed to. There you go. That's what it's supposed to look like. But... Of course, the edge lamps are burned out. So it would look much nicer if the glass was also lit up. But there's the line. And you can see that as I tune the radio, that line moves. It's pretty cool. It looks good, too. If only the I could get some of these light bulbs. Or maybe I'm going to change out the sockets. Just because I, I want to have this thing all lit up like it's supposed to be. Because it will look so good. So I've been replacing the light bulbs. I did this one already. You can see what I did is I took a Type 47 bulb and holder. And I stuffed it inside the socket for the bigger bulb. Here's one of the original ones. And the way these sockets come apart is... The bottom of the socket is this thing, and it also has a spring under it to hold tension on the bulb. And you just cut the wire, and then this pulls out the top of the socket. And you're left with a nice little thing with a hole in the bottom. Then what I did is I took some of these old number 47 light sockets from an old chassis, and I had to cut them down. You can see the side here. Um... There was a little clip here which would have clipped onto the chassis and that would have held the bulb in place and also been the negative return path. But that's gone so I have to solder this wire onto it to be the negative. And then it had the positive is that one that's already in there which goes to a little thing in there. And then what I do is I'm going to take these two wires and shove them through that hole. And then one of them solders onto the connection there, and one of them solders onto the cut wire. And then it looks like that it works great. And it's just, um, I'm, I decided to replace these because I don't have any of these, and they might be rare and hard to find. These number 47s, they still make them. See, I have some here. You can buy them pretty cheap. You get like 10 of them. These are used in thousands of radios number 47 bulbs which is why they still make them but these ones i don't know so i just it's better to just replace it with the number 47 bulb just to look at it before i put it back in the cabinet i'm gonna call it done now i replaced a few more capacitors 
the light bulbs work. Uh, there's no danger of the lights shorting out now. Uh, the phono input has been added. So this thing is ready to go. I also tried to remove as much rust as I could. I tried to, I took it all off the, the front of the chassis. The, on, the only place I couldn't get the rust off was back here, but um, whatever. So you see af after I just put some of that fresh wood stain on there, it really camouflages all the scratches. It's not perfect, but it looks much better and it doesn't take a lot of work. I just take some of this Varathane type stuff and I put it over the scratches and they kind of disappear. I've done this many times. It, it works great. It's super lazy and fast and easy. That's why I do it. It works good. The sides are in mint condition, though, I will say. No work needed there. It's basically done now. The cabinet. So here it is all done. How about a little demo, huh? It's, I gotta say, it's one of my one of my top five best looking projects for sure. That bit of stain really helped it out. I forgot to tighten one knob down. Oh well. Yep, the switch is still flaky. Nothing I can do about that. You can visit our website at citynews.ca. Marie Gomez, City News. The World Cup Cup kicks off in Qatar in less than two weeks in one superstar's dreams of playing for Canada. Canada already in tough in a brutal group after with 2018 World Cup semi-finalists Belgium and finalists Croatia along with Morocco. Mike Leach, City News. A Jewish so there you go. And here it is in the dark. This is a really nice dial glass. You can see the line there projected from that little light bulb that I rewired. For the on the site, including this one. So there you go. It's a great looking radio and it works great. And it was a fun project.